Hey everybody, Jesus Speaks here. It's been about nine months since I have been um, on with you guys. I've been dedicating my full time into my prayer ministry um, on my Facebook page. And also I've been watching some videos on YouTube as well, dedicating some time to uh, pray and pray for other people and just concentrating on what God wants me to do. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things. I, I've, I have had dreams, um, and I'm going to share a couple of them. But um, I wanted to say that I received that 2020, it's the year of all things. It's when everything will come full circle. I'm not setting dates or anything. I'm just saying what what I've been shown is that the world will get worse. It will be chaotic. But the body of Christ will not be touched. We will be living a completely different experience. And it's in the overflow of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be serving Him. And... We're going to be bringing in the remnant. We have to bring in, there's a group of a group of people that we still need to bring in. So we're going to be working full time for Jesus. So we're going to be in the midst of um, supernatural events, miracles. It's an overflow of the Holy Spirit like never before. So just be ready to work for Jesus and to bring in the people that are still doubting, that have not um, known the truth of who Jesus is. And I just speak peace over you and the boldness and the confidence to bring this to pass, to, to not be afraid, to share the word. So, I wanted to share a dream I had a couple of months ago. This was the most realistic rapture experience I have ever had. I've been blessed with many, many rapture dreams uh, for the past four years, almost five years now. And I know that four years ago, I thought that, that it was going to happen right then and there. But the Lord knows when he starts giving us the dreams and and, and the vision so that we may be ready and we may share it with other people and bring people in. So, um, a couple of months ago, I had a, a dream and I was, all I remember is that instantly I was flying through the air and it was at a rapid, rapid pace, but I could still see things in slow motion, if that makes sense. And the feeling of joy that I had, I, it's like I experienced um, joy. Um, I, was, I was crying, but of, of happiness. And so I was like, I can't believe this is happening. It's finally here. It's just amazing. I laughed, I cried, and like, but I was, when I tell you that I was laughing and crying hysterically of joy, it's just something I've never experienced in my life. And it's the most amazing experience we are going to have. Um, it, it was just incredible. And it came a point where I was crossing uh, what I understand now that is the veil. Because it was like a transparent... Um, sheet or curtain but it was very thin and when I went through it my my head got all wet I understood that at the time I thought that it, it was just water but then when I when I went like this to try and feel it it was it was not running through it was it was stuck in there it was so it was oil so because we are his anointed and we are chosen by him. So it was oil. And then I, when I broke through that, <clears throat> all of a sudden, 
I could see, I came to this, to this place and it was, um, there was sunlight and that there was a little girl. I was actually like, when I got there, I was like descending. And as I was descending, I saw in slow motion, this little girl, she was looking at me like kind of confused, <clears throat> but I was super excited. There was this man uh, uh, like walking up to me as I was about to touch the ground and he had a white suit. Everything was white. It was a white shirt, white jacket, white pants, everything. Um, he was probably between mid thirties and late thirties, early forties. He looked young and <clears throat> I said, I can't believe it. I'm here. This is awesome. I was just um, talking about it and now it's here. Um, I knew, I knew it was going to happen soon. And he, he didn't say anything at all to me. He was just kind of like listening to me. And then uh, this woman joined him as well. So this woman had the same attire. The girl, oh, the girl, I forget, she was with her parents. And I knew that to be her parents, I just knew. And they were wearing white robes. I forgot that. But then, so I started walking with the man and the woman that welcomed me. And we were walking into this building. And I went up the stairs. And as I went around, I went through this hallway. And when I got to the end of the hallway, um, there was an office that I could see to the side. I couldn't see inside the office. I could just see, you know, when you walk to the side and there's a door right there. So I, I knew that, that there was someone important that I was gonna see inside the office. And then, um, in my heart, I was full of joy because I thought it was it was Jesus that I was going to see. And then as I started walking to the door so that I could get in, I was pulled back slowly. It was just a force that started pulling me back. And I started screaming, no, no, I don't want to leave. I love Jesus, Jesus, God. I started screaming with everything I had in my heart because I didn't want to leave. Um, the man <clears throat> that had originally escorted me uh, to the building looked at me and he could see that I was just so upset and so heartbroken that I had to leave. And he just, they kind of like stopped me in front of him. And he said, I can't remember the exact words right now, but it was something like, we have to overcome. And I said, I started crying and I said, I know, I know. We have to, we are overcomers. Um, nobody's perfect, but, but I understand that we have to be overcomers. The word says it. And then they started pulling me back again and I kept screaming Jesus' name because I really didn't want to leave. Obviously, it's not the time, right? Um, and that's why we're still here because it's, it's around the corner, but it's not yet, not quite yet. So, and that, that was it for that dream. Um, the next dream, it was... And, and this was not a few days after, this was maybe like a month after. I was walking around this school and there was, there were kids in there, like middle, elementary, middle school age kids. And, but the room that this teacher was in, it was older kids, probably high school kids. And I know that the teacher was Jesus. So when I looked around and I saw that he was coming out, I was so, so excited. I wanted to run to him. And he actually came to me and just hugged me. He didn't say a word. He just gave me the strongest hug. 
the most amazing hug. I felt all the love, all the compassion. He knows what you need, when you need it. And then I, when the hug, when the hug was done, I told him, can I do this again tomorrow? <laughs> and he said, no. Um, and I said, oh, I get it. When, when I get back, when I come back, we can do this again. So, it's just been an amazing, amazing few months. The Lord Jesus Christ is around the corner. Things are about to unravel this year. But we as the church have a job to do. Uh, to keep bringing people in and keep speaking the truth. We have to stand in the truth of the word. Um, and we have to bring people to repentance and pray that there is a Holy Spirit conviction so that they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you need prayer, um, please comment below and I'd be happy to pray for you and your family. Um, in the meantime, I hope this blesses you and I pray for for discernment, for truth, to be established within the body of Christ, um, for boldness, forgiveness and healing of the heart, and just may we be ready for what is lying up ahead. But what I can tell you is it's going to be amazing for the body of Christ, for the ones that are hearing, for the ones that are awake in Jesus. I love you. God bless you.